And glory, hallelujah. Got up here right at sunrise. This is where I started my first YouTube video. It was 62 years ago today that I was born, the youngest of five children. Two years ago today, I decided to start making YouTube videos. Not just for the heck of it, but Psalms 119 says that man's life shall be three score and ten, and if by chance four score, it shall not come without tribulation, trials. So I thought, well, I reached a three score, what am I going to do with the ten? And that's when I thought, you know, I don't have much to contribute to this world. I don't have uh, children or an estate or any kind of legacy career, anything like that to pass down to anybody. For what I have in here and what I have in here is what I value the most because that's the one thing that nobody can touch, nobody can take away. It's the kind of thing that money can't buy. And... Uh, that's what I wanted to share with the world. So I started making videos, sharing my testimony, sharing the beauty of Sedona. <coughs> and it's a beautiful day. So on my first video, I rode this sidewalk, which goes about well, more than a quarter mile, <laughs> maybe a half a mile. But my feet weren't quite up for that just because these sidewalk cracks. You know, it's tuk 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 and it gets faster and faster and faster. But yeah, this sidewalk goes down the hill and around all these baseball fields. Comes out over here. There's a parking lot. And then you can actually turn in the street and start heading down the street towards town. Just absolutely beautiful here. So, I'm not much one for birthday celebrations. I don't really have big expectations for birthdays as far as parties or presents or anything like that but to me it's all about just giving thanks thanks to the Lord for this life and being happy and healthy so today I'm here to say hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you for Another day, another day to sing God's praise. And then I also bought, uh, when was that? 22 years ago, 40 years old I think was when I decided to start celebrating my birthday on a skateboard. <laughs> so, we got some of that coming up. But I kind of wanted to reflect on, you know, 62 years of life and two years of making YouTube videos. The YouTube videos have been an experience. It's a learning curve for me because, well, it was 1978 when I determined that I didn't want to be a part of technology. I was going to let technology just pass me by. And then four years ago, 2019 was when I decided to, to get a uh, smartphone so I could catch up on everything on YouTube. I'm here to enjoy this grass. Oh, look at this.
yeah if you've watched my YouTube videos then you know it's been a learning curve for me because I didn't have any technological skills didn't really know what I was doing learn as I go and uh, it's been an adventure it's been a good adventure in 62 years of life boy that's been quite the adventure looking back I uh, I've shared a lot of my testimony over the years the two years I've been making videos I thought I had 180 videos and 160 something subscribers but it was the other way around I had 160 something videos and I think 188 subscribers but part of my testimony that I didn't share was that, you know, looking back on life, it's amazing that I'm still here, still alive. I've got a uh, guardian angel for sure keeping me alive. Starting at age seven was the first time that I had an accident that even the doctor said, woulda shoulda killed me coulda woulda shoulda and then at uh, age 10 was when i had my first spine injury and that changed my posture for uh, over a decade and then i re-injured my spine and straightened it back out so i've had back problems since i was like 10 years old and at age 15 I had a skateboard accident that nearly knocked my front teeth out I ran into a wooden fence post going at least 40 miles an hour and the only place it hit me was right in the mouth and I bounced off of that and went back up the hill that that I had just come down on the skateboard and knocked me out and when I came to there was a little boy standing in front of me saying are you okay are you okay I looked down I'm covered in blood and I said hell no I'm not okay but that happened within two blocks of hospital and it just so happened that my older sister was a nurse at that hospital and got stitches in my lower lip and had a scab on my upper lip that made me look like Charlie Chaplin and uh, I got to thinking about that afterwards and if that fence post had hit my nose probably would have crushed my face and uh, caused some brain damage if it would have gone below my chin it would have crushed my my throat and my breathing tube you know so in a couple inches higher a couple inches lower that was another accident that would have should have killed me and then a few years later I think it was 21 and I was uh, at work and I had a boss who was very impatient he was all about get her done get her done quick let's make some profit let's get on to the next one and we were installing a an overhead crane which involved welding I beams up to the ceiling sorry about the light change here so I had spent a couple weeks attaching two I beams to the ceiling then we had to install the uh, the mechanical part of it and the electrical runners and everything well there was runners that had to run the full length of the building and came up two feet short so he said Go down and cut some pieces and bring them up here and put them on and then we'll fire this thing up and try it out. So I went down and cut some pieces. 
And when I came back up, I was in a uh, snorkel lift, otherwise known as a cherry picker. You know, it's a telescopic boom that lifts you up. It's got a little basket on it. So I lifted myself up into the corner of the building and started to, uh, you know, just reach out to grab the beam for balance. It was with my left hand and he had already turned on the electricity and those three runners that were carrying the electricity was shooting that electricity right into the wall. And my hand passed through that two foot section to where the electricity was running through and it went into my hand that left three burns and I watched my arm swell up the size of like a watermelon and it threw me back. And if it wasn't for my feet getting caught on the rail on the opposite side of that snorkel lift, you know, cause it's a small basket, barely enough room for two people to be in there. You know, I would have gotten thrown out of that basket and down into the pit on the, uh, in the cement floor, which would have been about a 40 foot fall onto the cement. But, um, you know, that was 220 volts, 25 amps of electricity. That would have, should have killed me. And, you know, it's just amazing to still be alive. I've got a guardian angel that I've been keeping busy. <laughs> so, those are parts of my testimony that I wanted to share. Just giving thanks for life. You know, it's an amazing time to be alive. Seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled and it's hard because not everybody gets it you know and the brainwashing that's taken place with mk ultra and operation mockingbird and you know just the materialism of this world people don't care all they care about is today you know their wants their needs all of that so, you know, it's just really hard to get through to them. And the Bible tells us that God does not want that any should perish, but that all should be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, the truth of His Son, that His Son died for our sins, just so that we could be with the Father. Because that's what He desires, is for us to be with Him. And we're coming into the harvest time to where it's time to return unto the Father. And that's why I decided to start making YouTube videos and, you know, just encouraging people to, to read their Bible. And, you know, if you look around, it's not hard to determine that we're in a battle of good versus evil. You know, all the division in this world tells us that it's good versus evil right now. And, you know, it's not even really good versus evil. It's God versus the devil. And who do you think is going to win that? You think the devil's going to beat the, the creator, the one who created him? I don't think so. So it's not hard to pick a side once you realize that it's required to pick a side. Got to get my shoes back on. But, you know, it's just getting people to that point of realizing that they got to pick a side. And I encourage more people to, to get on YouTube, you know, and make your own videos. I don't have much to contribute. You know, I don't do this for, for money. I don't do it for popularity. I'm not doing it for recognition. If I can make a difference in one or two people's life if I can make them stop and think and pick up their Bible and start reading you know I'll be happy and I hope that that makes our Heavenly Father happy and you know we've all got something to contribute we've all got piece of the puzzle so I'm encouraging people to make videos and put your piece of the puzzle in Everybody needs it. You may not think it's much, but it's it's worth more than you can imagine. You know, imagine putting a puzzle together and you spend all that time putting a thousand or more pieces together and you get it all done 
except for one piece is missing. It's just, it's not complete. It's not the same. You have a sense of accomplishment that you got it all put together, but yet, you know, there's that one piece missing. And you'll probably turn the house upside down looking for it, and you know, wondering, is it, is it under the couch? Is it under the table? You know, is it in the cracks of the chair? Where is it? Where is that one piece? So put your piece in. Whatever your piece of the puzzle may be, put it in. Because the puzzle's not complete without it. God loves all of his children. He gave us all gifts. He gave us all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, temperance, meekness, gentleness, long-suffering. I'm sure everybody's got some of that going on in their life, you know. So the Holy Spirit is in touch with all of us in one way or another at some point in our life. And there's nothing He desires more than for us to, to seek Him. He's everywhere at once doing everything for everybody. He's not hard to find. But He's very sensitive. And He won't force Himself upon you. He wants you to invite Him in. Jesus wants you to invite Him in. He's not going to force himself on anybody. So that's what I'm encouraging people to do is to just seek God, seek Jesus, seek the Holy Spirit. The three are one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. One can't exist without the other. Find it all in God's Word. So read your Bible for yourself and See what you find. I mean, consider this, that if I'm wrong and the Bible is all just made up story by somebody and there is no God, there is no devil, there is no heaven, there is no hell, then what happens when we all die? We're all in the same boat. It's the end of life. It's the end of everything. You know, there's no consequences one way or the other. So that's what would happen if I was wrong about the Bible being the Word of God, that heaven and hell is real, that the only way to heaven is through Jesus. God sent His Son to, to be the, the price paid for everybody to get there. That's how much He loves us. So... If I'm right, though, then it's a whole different story because the only people who are going to make it there are the ones who accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And those who didn't accept Him are not going to make it. Looks like i got a skateboarder coming in. <laughs> going to take my empty skateboard park. I thought I was going to have it to myself, but that's okay. We'll share. Look at this beautiful place. He's probably a lot better than me anyway. I just want to get out here and take a lap around or so. Doesn't look like he's in any hurry. So, let me get my board. Let me strap you in. And we'll take a lap around. Hold on. <laughs> 